Is money controlling you? Or do you control your money? <laughs> what we don't realize is that every decision we make is actually based on money. What we eat, how often we go out, where we live, where our kids go to school. When we go to a restaurant, we look at the food on the left side, what looks good, and then we pan our eyes to the right side. Every decision we make. So with our Financial Foundation Educational Program, we want to learn how to, number one is help you make money work better for you. Also help you guys find and save more money. Help you understand your investments and build wealth. And also protect and preserve your money. We want to help you become your own money manager. What does that mean? Is that no one can come in and sell you a product or a solution that you don't need or you don't understand. You buy because you understand first. And we teach you habits. We teach you habits of successful people. So what, what workshops do we cover here? So this is Julian's workshop, so that's why there's a, she's attended all the workshops, that's why there's writing here. Uh, so we teach people on, in the first workshop, increasing cash flow and how to manage your debt. Um, workshop number two, which is build a strong financial foundation and proper protection. How to build wealth and accumulate your assets. How to plan your retirement and preserve wealth. And also, if you're like Julian and myself, who entered this campaign just to learn, but saw so much value that we started to share, how do we build a business doing that? We actually talk about that in the fifth workshop too. So there is an opportunity for you guys to come here and get a license. But I just want to break, breeze through this workshop, workbook really quickly is, as you notice, this workbook is all fill in the blank. Why? It's because as you attend our workshops, we want you to be able to take down notes, become, be more proactive in your learning, right? Instead of someone just teaching you what to do and telling you what to do, right? You become included in your education, your finances, okay? And so the last thing I want to share with you is, how do we build a new industry through our national financial literacy campaign? What are we trying to do? You know, right now, Lucy, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty on the horizon. To cut costs, many companies are moving jobs overseas, outsourcing. Automation may mean more job losses, right? But also many small businesses may have limited capital, making it more difficult to compete with large chains and distribution systems. That's why traditionally we used to work for 40 years, between 25 to 65, and then we retired. But now even a lot of my friends graduated college for the last six, seven, eight years, have jumped from job to job to job. And so our income becomes very inconsistent. And so right now we have some obstacles ahead. Right, the first one is the retirement crisis. So this stool actually symbolizes the three traditional sources of income for our retirement. So the first one is Social Security, right? Every time we get paid in our paycheck, a portion of it goes to Social Security. But did you guys know that actually after 2037, the way it's looking right now is that Social Security may not even be available anymore, which means that the government cannot take care of us. But also company pension. Do you guys have a pension at work? No? 90% of companies no longer offer pension, meaning companies cannot take care of us anymore too. Which means the only source of income we can rely on is personal savings. That's why we have to be educated. But also there's an education crisis. Tuition costs keep rising, right? Student loans can be a burden, but even graduates have trouble finding their jobs and the right career for them. And what we're starting to see is even students that graduate, just like Julian in a certain field, jump to a different industry, right? But the main one is this one, the spending crisis. You ever go on Facebook? You ever go on Facebook, you see all your friends, everyone's going to Vietnam, Hawaii, Pakistan, China. No, oh, not Pakistan, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or some beautiful areas around Pakistan. Uh, but let me ask you, if, if Rocky, you wanted to take Lucy on a beautiful vacation back to China, uh, how much would it cost per ticket? I'm, I'm going to do that. Eight thousand, fifteen hundred. That's why I'm taking her. Fifteen hundred. So that means if you're going and then you take your wife, that's three thousand dollars, right? Julian, how much does it go back to the Philippines per person? Probably about a thousand dollars per person, right? So we need two thousand. That's why if you look on your Facebook, when they get there, the only place they go to is the beach, because the beach is free, right? The main issue is really the spending crisis. To keep up with our friends and our family, uh, we end up spending more money than we make, right? So we ask number one: Is what is your situation right now? Do you guys have problems paying your bills? You know what? When I first came, okay, oh, okay. Yeah. When I actually first came here, I brought my uncle to this campaign, and he sat into the uh, into the orientation. And the first line they said was, "Do you have problems paying your bills?" And my uncle got very offended. He said, "What? No, I work. I know how much I get paid." And he says, "I make money. I get paid. I give my money to my wife. She had problem paying my bills." <laughs> Are you concerned about your job or your career? Every quarterly layoff, are we concerned that that's us? Are you paid what you're worth? 
right? Are your children growing up and your parents growing old faster than you can provide? You know, when I worked at the bookstore, I worked there for actually nine years. And that's a long time to work at a bookstore.